this is Meg McCarthy from Cherry Picks. We're here at the Athleta Store in Park City for the 2023 Sundance Film Festival with the wonderful star and filmmaker of Shada. Congratulations, everyone, on the film, and happy Sundance. How y'all feeling? Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to dive right in. Um, you've called this film a love letter to mothers and daughters, the women of Iran, but also to culture. As storytellers and multicultural Iranian women, how do you balance showcasing all of these aspects equally and weaving them into a fabric of honor? I think it's a delicate balance, and it always has been, you know, since writing the script, uh, especially since it's set in a women's shelter. There's, there's a really amazing ensemble of women actors there and all coming from different walks of life, so that's one facet that needed to be balanced. Uh, and then the Iranian community, um, as well as, yeah, what's happening for Shada, Mona and Hossein. But for me, it was always important to stay focused on Shada and Mona's journey, mm -hmm. like staying in their subjective experience of what's happening um, throughout the film. And so we, we see the world through their eyes. And I think in grounding the film in that sense, it allows the it allows us to have that myriad of themes and characters, um, but experiencing alongside them. Um, so I think that that's how the balance kind of happened by grounding it with them. Lovely, lovely. Um, I know you've spoken about the story being born out of the memoirs your mother wrote to you about your own childhood. Can you talk about the process, about that process and how it changed your, or how it may have changed your interpretation of the past and perhaps if it was a healing experience for the present? So I was five years old when we lived in the women's shelter and uh, around six years ago, I asked my mom to write a memoir to fill in the gaps of my childhood memories. And, uh, but she sort of went above and beyond. Like she spent six months writing it in Farsi every night and it tracked her from her arranged marriage in Iran mm -hmm. through to her independence in Australia, like 10 years of her life. So it was actually a great deal of material. Mm. Um, it could have made 10 feature films out of it yeah. with all of the stories and hardships she's been through. Um, but yeah, I took, I took that, I translated it 50,000 words. I took it to Spain and I wrote the first draft, which was close, the, cl the closest version to um, our story mm. in terms of what really happened. And then over, over the next years, I worked with uh, script editor Lynn Vincent McCarthy to to find the cinematic potential of the story beyond, you know, the biographic details of our mm -hmm. lives. Um, because at the end of the day, we're making <clears throat> a cinematic experience. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's many fictional elements and plot points that are, are interwoven um, with our story. It's so beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the best stories are kind of born from truth. And um, it's just what a lovely story. Um, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Uh, Zar, the film uh, explores the ways we, we re-examine our cultural heritage when moving to new places. Um, can you speak about how Shada navigates this experience as she creates a new life and in many ways a new cultural identity for herself and her daughter in Australia? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for these uh, loaded questions. <laughs> no, it's interesting, important. Um, yeah, you know, I think it starts, first of all, with this amazing female journey, this mother and daughter. And as you said, it comes from, you know, it's inspired, it's not only inspired, it's a true story. And, uh, you know, the, I, I, I think Shada, in the movie and Nora's mom are both kind of, you know, just inspiring ca characters. And uh, I mean, I, I I really had somehow Shada in myself, maybe because I have the experience, maybe mm -hmm. because uh, somehow, I, you know, I know how you lose everything and how you start from the beginning, from even from, from zero somehow. And uh, something which was really, you know, I was connected to the story because of maybe the, this story of trauma. And I think that was something that really touched my heart. And I, you know, I think exactly how I started, you know, everything from the zero with all traumas that I had when I moved to France. Yeah. And as many other women that I know, 
that how they just lost everything in one night and how they moved and how they just chosen to be in exile but but uh, being free mm -hmm. and uh, you know enjoy just enjoy the life you know and th that that's joy also that's you know the question of how having the joy of your life but you know, I think that the daughter in this movie, you're gonna say, she is the example of that joy. And I don't have, I don't have kid, but I think Nura's mom and Nura, they just shared everything like in a very smooth way with me. And because we have all this, uh, this, you know, the same traumas. Yeah. At in the, the end of the day, I, I think you know, we all left the country like uh, in a. a we just have this experience of being in a patriarchal system mm -hmm. mindset and uh, just dealing with uh, that uh, dominating society and dominating male around males around you mm -hmm. so I, I i mean it's just like uh, mm -hmm. it's coming from a strength just like you need to be brave and strong yeah. otherwise you can't manage it, but most of the women that I know, they they just they just manage it. And I I think we women we have it in in our existence. You know, whenever you are, wherever you know, wherever you go, you find your way. You find your best direction. Mm -hmm. You save yourself, and you're gonna enjoy your life, and you're gonna have the best future for your kid. I I'm not sure if all men could mm -hmm. build everything up again in the same way. Women are so adaptable. Um, I think we practice, we do it in little ways um, and we don't even realize we're doing it sometimes and in big ways obviously as well. And I think too, it's that strength and vulnerability um, and it's truly remarkable. I, um, I'm gonna end on this question that I just love to ask and it's another loaded one, I apologize. Um, but what did you both learn most about yourselves, maybe professionally or personally, through this journey, taking this journey together? <laughs> I really, something that I, you know, I'm working on it. And I think that was a really amazing experience for me, being in this journey with Nura, that how you overcome your traumas, you know. I mean, maybe I was kind of just trying to do it, and I, I don't say that I wasn't successful in this journey, you know, but I think I learned a lot. I just found the balance. I just found, you know, I, I, I lost four kilos. <laughs> it never happened to me in a shooting. I mm -hmm. just get even weight. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, just it, it was kind of uh, meditation at the same time, suffering. And just watching yourself in the whole journey that it's just, it's kind of similar to your own journey. It, it was an amazing. I had uh, every night nightmares and just crying all day, panic attacks and same. everything. Uh, Nura was the same, exactly. And uh, I think we just grew up with it. I, I mean, mm. me. Yeah, I mean, similarly for me, it was, it was very challenging, the shoot. And... Um, you know, especially because I was reliving my childhood trauma on set, meanwhile being a director to actors, to crew, and it was very challenging ch psychologically. And I mean, at the, I remember in the beginning of rehearsals, I was I was talking candidly with the women in in the cast about, you know, that that I was scared about doing this film about, you know. Uh, how how am I going to overcome this thing, you know? And and I remember Zara telling me, she said, you will, and you're going to be even stronger for it. And I remembered that, and it still stays with me because it's so true. I feel, I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders, you know, in making this film. And and it's a it's sort of an out of body experience actually when when you take your pain and turn it into art and then share it with people yeah. in another continent. You know, it was yeah. surreal. You know, I, I surreal. think there is a, you need to keep your distance also with your mm -hmm. personal story because yeah. you're not, you're, as you said, you're just doing mm -hmm. your cinematic experience. And the job. And you're not about to just having therapy with your mm -hmm. movie, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, like, teeny. It's a fine line. Yeah. And I did have a therapist on set for some portion yeah. of it. But, uh, yeah, you know, I was going from having a panic attack in the room 
to coming out and directing my father's character and you know it's very yeah. it was very challenging but uh, you know as the editing happened and I started to see it all come together it started feeling like this separate thing this thing that I created this thing that I was overseeing and it I felt empowered by it oh that's you know yeah that's and beautiful. Um, and I just yeah I, I feel I feel really proud of everyone who worked on it and for you know committing so much of their heart and soul to this project like mm -hmm. Zara was incredible to work with well it sounds like there was so much love poured into this process mm -hmm. and on set and it sounded like you created created that safe space for y'all to both dive into this mm -hmm. um head first and and in the end it was healing and I'm just excited mm -hmm. for the whole world to see it and I think it's going to touch so many people and thank you so much for your art <laughs> for your voice and for everything um I really appreciate it and thanks for taking the time thank today you. I know y'all are busy you. and I hope you continue celebrating yourselves in this film as well throughout the festival thank you so much it's it's wonderful to be at Sundance and to speak with you today <laughs>